In this video we will be talking about electric current. In the previous video we looked at electric fields and electric potential. We saw that we could have a bunch of negative and positive charges which are stuck together because of the electric field that acts between them and then we can do some negative work against this field to provide the charges with some potential energy. So we've got a difference delta V there, a voltage difference, which will give the positive charges some potential energy and hence if we connect a circuit between the positive and negative charges, i.e. some path for them to flow through, they will do just that. And as they do that, they will gradually lose their potential energy until positive and negative charges are yet again brought together. In the analogy that we looked at uh, for the water distribution system, where water is piped down from the reservoir to people's houses, it is important to define the flow rate of the water. Similarly, it is important to define the rate of flow of charge in an electric circuit, and this is termed the electric current. So we define this measure, which is very similar to flow rate in the reservoir example, and we are basically looking at the amount of charge delta Q, which crosses a specific volume over a time interval delta T. And we define the electric current as delta Q over delta T. While we use pipes to channel water, in the case of charges, we use conductors. These allow positive charges to flow through them from a point of higher voltage to a point of lower voltage. We must point out that although we are assuming that positive charges are the mobile carriers that make up the current, in actual facts they are not, and it is negative charges that uh, make up uh, our current. However, we have been using and we will continue to use consistently the conventional current model which is based on the assumption that the current is the rate of flow of positive charges. We will see later in the course why this assumption allows us to create a valid model and how things would work if we used a physical current flow instead. The ideal type of conductors, which we call perfect conductors, allow charges to flow unopposed and hence very very fast. They can be seen as very, very large diameter pipes in the water analogy and they will let any amount of charge flow through them almost instantly. However, these do not exist in practice and uh, any conductor will be characterized by a parameter called conductance which will set a top limit for the current that can flow through it. Good conductors, for example, are copper and gold. So suppose that we have a bunch of positive and negative charges stuck together and then we do some work to separate them and hence we give our positive charges some potential energy delta V. Now we place a perfect conductor between the site where the positive charges are and the site where the negative charges are. The positive charges will flow super quickly down to the negative charges and lose their potential energy. This is not terribly useful however because we will just get back to where we started. So often in circuits charges will flow through circuit elements called resistors and the internal construction of these is such that it will make it harder for charges to flow. They will be colliding with obstacles and losing energy as they do so and then this energy lost will manifest as heat. So two things happen when charges flow through a resistor. The charges will lose some potential energy which can also be phrased in terms of them dropping some voltage and also they will take longer to flow through and thus there will be a lower rate of flow of charge or electric current through them. If you think about the formula, we'll have the same delta Q, but it will take a longer interval of time delta T for the charge to flow through the same volume. So again, here we're creating a voltage difference delta V and we're letting the charges flow through a resistor and we will get a current this time, which is still pretty high, but not as high as it would be in a perfect conductor. So in the previous example, we only had what we could call a transient current in that we gave the positive charges some potential energy which allowed the positive charges to flow back down to the negative charges through the resistor. But then of course, once those charges have flown through, we don't have any more to sustain a continuous current flow. However, if we use the battery, and this is a device which will continually supply charges at its positive terminal so as to maintain this delta V, this would allow us to establish a constant current flow. And this is shown in this animation here, where charges will flow through the circuit, but the battery will continue through electrochemical internal processes to maintain a constant potential difference between its terminals, and hence allow a constant supply of charges and a constant current to flow through the resistor. 